The exterior of the City Hall of Rochester, New Hampshire, does little to reveal the treasure to be found within, an intimate theater, and something even more remarkable, a movable floor system. Research reveals that today no other historic inclining floor system survives in working order in the United States. The building, designed by prominent architect George Gilman Adams, was dedicated in May 1908 with $1,100 covering the cost of the floor system, dominated by an impressive proscenium, and once seating over a thousand patrons. The auditorium was also highlighted by intricate stenciling, distinctive murals, and a suspended horseshoe balcony. But by the mid-1970s, the theater was abandoned with the doors locked. Various plans to restore the theater over the years fell short. But in 1996, a newly energized effort to resurrect the Opera House took shape. A small army of volunteers painstakingly uncovered the original proscenium from under at least four layers of paint while also duplicating the prominent Victorian stenciling of yesteryear based upon the original color scheme. In all, 18 months of effort with over $300,000 in donated cash and materials and 10,000 hours of volunteer labor brought about the Renaissance. The original wrought iron and wood opera house chairs are still ganged in groups of three or four for ease of removal and are held in place by a unique brass T floor connector. The star attraction of the opera house remains, however, the moving floor, which is roughly 57 feet in width and 41 feet in length, able to be raised and lowered at its rear edge approximately three feet. Although oral tradition held it took several hours to complete the raising or leveling of the floor, in actuality it takes closer to three quarters of an hour as the floor moves approximately one inch per minute. Through the open center doors, one is able to view the floor in the raised position. The process to shift the floor begins by removing temporary jacks, which stabilize the floor when it is in the inclined position. The motor and key mechanics are to be found through a small floor opening in the balcony. Following adjustments, the system is started at a low speed, and if the belts are running smoothly, the electrical control switch is thrown to run position. The power generated by a three horsepower electric motor is initially transferred through a series of lengthy leather belts as well as flywheels. The direction of the floor's movement can be dictated by shifting the correct belt onto the slightly larger center wheel of a three-part control unit. A weighted link chain connected to a girder provides a readout of the process. Traditional start and stop lines are marked on a wooden stud because one is visually blocked from viewing as the action unfolds. Eventually, energy is transferred to a continuous shaft running the width of the auditorium, which powers a total of seven major flathead gears, each with a lengthy threaded shaft extending downwards into the back wall of the auditorium. A floating collar moves up and down the shaft according to the direction of the rotating movement, which in turn is attached to a pair of connecting rods that are secured to a corresponding floor girder. These girders remain solitary timbers, approximately eight by 14 inches, and run the entire length of the auditorium floor. Although seemingly a painstakingly slow process, the floor eventually completes its downward journey. Experience dictates that the chairs remain in place as the floor lowers because the additional weight is needed for the system to work efficiently. In total, George Gilman Adams designed seven municipal buildings complete with auditoriums in New England, of which four were equipped with his patented movable floor designs. Once the floor is level, seats are removed in a labor-intensive process, with the bulk of them going to the stage and backstage areas for temporary storage. A good sweep of the floor and the flat surface is ready for a variety of civic or artistic events, 
and as such, the Rochester Opera House maintains the title of the last moving floor in action.